Hi there, I'm Barb Shelton and I'm the lifeologist behind the Let's Do This videos. Today I want to share something with you that has been a snag in my spiritual life and it has to do with forgiveness. So there have been all sorts of things in my life where I have been offended by people, um, hurt, intentionally hurt, inadvertently hurt, just all sorts of situations that have been difficult to deal with. What has happened is I have thought that I had forgiven either a person or a group of people, you know, whatever, which I'll be sharing in just a moment so you'll know what I mean by that. I had thought that I had forgiven them, but then something would come up and uh, that kind of situation or the person would be mentioned again and I would start, my blood would start boiling, I'd be upset. And I would think, oh my goodness, this is not a done deal in me. This is not finished. And I need to come up with something that's more thorough, more in depth. There is no offense so deep that Jesus is not able to go as deep as that and help me forgive and then help me also just deal with it and heal from it. So that is what this process that I came up with is intended to do. It started out as 10 steps to forgiveness and healing and ended up, I'm at 14 right now and that may change as I get into the process more and maybe even as I hear from some of you who have ideas as to something else that maybe needs to be added to it to make it thorough. So I'm gonna go through these and I'm gonna also give you an example as I go along. Now. I couldn't share any specific people, but there is a group of people that I'm going to be sharing with you. The 14 steps, I'll be showing those on the screen, and then I've also got a free printable. And there'll be two free printables, actually, two versions of it. One is one that you can print out and just write in. And then the other one is one that you can do on your computer so that it just expands as you type. Step number one is to ask God to show you the specific source of hurt. The person who did it, exactly what happened, whether it was a one-time thing or if it was ongoing, the place, the timing, and anything else that comes to mind. So that's all we're dealing with right now is what actually happened. So for me, this one that I'm going to be sharing and processing each one of these steps with you was people who left me out. I start tearing up. Just thinking about this, so uh, there's obviously more healing that needs to be done there, but this process, I call it forgiveness episodes, is exactly what I need to help me get this dealt with. Once and for all, I am hoping. Kids at school who chose me second to have over, and this would go something like this. Hey, Barbara, do you want to come and spend the night? I asked so-and-so, and she can't do it, so do you want to? Okay, so uh, the only reason I'm being asked is because somebody else said no. So that hurt, and that happened quite a few times. Uh, another one was to be chosen last on a team. I even remember team captains arguing over who was not going to get me. And then the other one was not being asked to dance at school dances. I loved to dance, and so it was really hard for me to go to a dance and just stand there and wait and wait and no boy would ever ask me and uh, you know school dances are really not the best place to be anyway I realized later on in life but at that time in my life it was just very painful I was once again rejected all right so then in step two you identify how this hurt you and what you feel about it so the first step is just getting the basics out and then the second one is we're going a little bit deeper so what I felt in these situations was I felt second best, I felt unvalued, I knew who the first choice was and I knew that I was not that. I felt uh, unwanted, unworthy of being included, uh, humiliated in a lot of cases, especially in the choosing teams situation. I was humiliated because by the time they got down to me, who had not been chosen, all these other kids on both teams, you know, could see that I was one of maybe one or two left that was not being chosen. It was just utterly humiliating. So the dances, it just hurt because I was not being chosen. I just felt rejected and unwanted and so uh, eventually stopped going. So then in step three, we dial up any anger. Like if you feel like asking the person, the perpetrator, if you want to call them that, why or how they could have done this to you, pour out your heart to the Lord about it instead. 
ask him every question that you would ask the person. Now, in this situation with the kids, um, you know, not including me, there wasn't really anger to deal with at that point because I just figured they're right. I'm unworthy. I'm rejectable, you know, so I wasn't angry at them for that. I was just hurt. So then in number four, it says here to forgive. Now tell the Lord that you forgive this person or these people and release them from your anger and bitter judgment in your heart and mind. Say the above to the person as well in your mind. If you have trouble doing this, ask the Lord to give you the grace to do it and to let them go. So I made a prayer here that I'll share with you. Lord, I forgive all these kids who hurt me and I do hereby release them from my bitter judgment. I'm sure they had no idea how their words and actions were affecting me. But even if they did, which actually I do think some of them did because I can remember the looks on some of their faces, very snarly and mean, making sure I knew I was second best or making sure that I knew I was not wanted on the team. It was intentional at that point in, in many cases. But whether they knew or not, I still forgive them, Lord. They are in your hands and they are out of my jurisdiction. And this is a huge part of forgiveness is that you basically take them out of your jurisdiction to judge them and to hold on to bitter judgment against them. And you put them into the jurisdiction of the Lord. So it's now the Lord's job to take care of dealing with them in whatever way he sees fit not whatever way I see fit. So vengeance is out of my hands. It's scripturally, you know, vengeance is in my hands, says the Lord. And so I am now actually making that transaction complete by putting the judgment into the Lord's hands and, and the ability to make that judgment without my input. All right, so then number five is pray for the person uh, if they are still alive, for them to see their error and sin so that they will not do this to someone else, releasing them to the Lord, not to myself, for him to do his work in them, including asking God to just plain bless them if you can get that grace to do that. So what I wrote here was, I hope that these people who are now my age, late 60s, have come to realize how hurtful acting this way is and have corrected their hearts, their thinking, and their actions. I pray for all of them, asking that they would not only not do this kind of thing, but that they would help their own kids, grandkids, students, be aware that this happens and help them be the ones to not do it and even to be the ones to make sure it doesn't happen in the situations that they are in. All right, so then number six, ask the Lord to show you if there was any sin on your part, what it was fully and specifically, not just generally, and then ask him to forgive you. Okay, my response to this is the only sin would be uh, bitterness at the kids. And I may have also retaliated in a kidly way, I don't remember, but being a kid, I'm sure I did. And so, Lord, I ask you to forgive me for my sins of bitterness and retaliation and vengeance. All right, then we're going to go to seven. And in this step, you ask the Lord if there's anything that you need to forgive yourself for in this situation. Let him show you. He will. If nothing comes to mind, but you sense something may still be there, then ask him to bring it to your mind later on when you're ready and process it with him at that time. Then on to eight, ask Abba Father to come in and treat the wound. Now this would be like surgery or like if you go to the ER and you need stitches, you need the wound to be treated, okay? Let him cleanse it, do the surgery, get out any debris or infection and do any stitches. So I just would sit with the Lord and allow him to do this in me. I would just let everything be dialed up to the surface, which already, you know, with the previous steps it was, so I would just say, okay, Lord, I need you to go in and treat this wound. In several of the situations, they felt like yesterday. So I wanted to give the Lord some time to just go in and treat that wound and, um, and just let him deal with my heart. And uh, just like I would if my grandchild came to me with an owie. I would want to treat the wound, you know, with whatever we needed in the medicine cabinet and then just let him take care of that. And then in the next one, we go on to dress the wound. So now we ask God to dress the wound on an ongoing basis, the recovery. Allow him to dress the wound with the antibiotic ointment of his grace, to cover the wound with his protective truth, which will prevent any germy lies from getting in and undermining the healing process, and let him restore that wound and the tissue around it to full health and functionality. All right, my response to this is that. The Lord has already done some work in this area of school dances and not getting asked to dance. Decades later, during a worship time at church, I saw this vision. It was just something I saw in my mind during worship. And it was of Jesus and me 
dancing in a spotlight. I could not see anybody else in the room. The whole room was black, but there was just this spotlight on Jesus and me dancing. I was just all of a sudden there. I was mostly aware of him and how enthralled he was with me, like a father and daughter dance at a wedding and how the father is so delighted with his daughter, the bride. Um, but Jesus was now tenderly dancing with me, and I felt him say to me, Barbara, forgive them. And I immediately knew he meant the boys at the school dances who hadn't asked me to dance. And then he said, they knew not what they were missing. And I knew he meant this in the purest way. It wasn't like a worldly, sensual kind of a way. It was just that he knew that I was a treasure. At this point, what he's doing as we're dancing in this spotlight is he is just speaking value to me and telling me that I'm a treasure. And uh, so that painful corner of my heart was brought into the light, literally in that spotlight, and was sweetly redeemed. So then in step 10, rest, we ask and allow the Holy Spirit to wrap his wings around you, draw you close, and comfort you. Breathe life and his light into you. There's a couple other steps coming up, and I'm going to just save those for one episode where I just sit down with the Lord and I just let him do all these. So uh, I will come back to that in just a little bit here. So then number 11 is ask the Father to speak truth to you about what happened. Were any lies or untruth involved? And the truth about who you are in him and how he sees you. And my answer to that is, yes, there were lies all over the place. He wants me to realize that my value back then and now did and does not come from what anyone thinks of me. It comes solely from him and his love and value of me as his precious girl. So that's what came out of the father-daughter, the Jesus-me dance. So in number 12, ask God to show you how he has used this to bring about good in your life. Even just one little thing. So what I wrote here, my response to this is, I am now have been for decades now, very aware of being the one to include people in what I am doing. I don't want people to feel left out, so I include and invite them. I create events in my home and I make people feel welcome and valued. I have a feeling I may not have been as aware of this, even wanting or needing to do this kind of thing had I not been so rejected and unwanted in school as a child. I do know my parents loved me, but we're talking about another area, obviously. So then number 13, ask the Father to enable you to love and function again as he would have you. Some of these steps would be done like if this had recently happened and you were kind of immobilized or paralyzed. Now, obviously this was many, many years ago, and so I'm already functioning, you know, but these steps are generic. They're like for every situation that you could come across and uh, find yourself involved in or something that has happened to you. So this step is specifically like if something happened to you that just kind of derailed you and sort of paralyzed you and kept you from functioning as, as you would want to just in a, you know, as a normal, loving, relating person. So that's what that one's for. But I just answered, he already is. He's already uh, enabling me to love. And then 14, so now turn my total focus to magnifying the Lord and his love for me, since what we magnify becomes what we reflect. And when we behold him, we are indeed changed from glory to glory. We are new creatures in Christ. The old has passed away and the new has come. And that's what we want here. We want all these episodes, all these things that have happened to us, all these hurts to no longer define us or restrict us. We want to get them out in the open, dealt with, allow God's light to shine on them, heal us, heal the wounds, and get us functioning as the Lord would have us function again. We want the old to be dead, gone, and we want our newness in Christ to be what we now focus on and where we let him take us. So then I'm going to continue doing that with the things that I mentioned before about sitting with the Lord and just letting him heal and all that. So my homework then is to ask my Abba Father to come in and treat the wound, doing surgery if needed, let him cleanse it, 
do that surgery, get out any debris or infection and make any stitches. And so I spent time doing that. And then rest, ask and allow the Holy Spirit to wrap his wings around you, draw you close and comfort you, breathe life and light into you. And then turn your total focus to magnifying the Lord. So you've just spent some time just being in his presence, allowing him to come and fill you and heal you and just speak truth to you and just allow that wound, if it has been festering, to just be exposed to light so that it can no longer fester, but it can be exposed and healed and you can be free. Then also, just because it hurts, just because there is a burn there, doesn't necessarily mean you haven't forgiven them. What I'm wanting to do is just go as deep as I can into this so that the Lord can heal me so far as it's possible to be healed here on earth. It may be heaven before you are thoroughly healed and freed up from it, but I want to give the Lord as much access to this hurting area as I can and as he's willing to go in and I believe he will do as much as I allow him to do. But just because something still hurts upon thinking of it, does not mean you haven't forgiven. Then the other thing I wanna talk about just briefly is what forgiveness is and isn't. Forgiveness does not mean that what they did was okay. So having forgiven someone does not mean that you need to now have a relationship with them, a friendship with them. You still may very likely need to have some very firm boundaries. So forgiveness is basically, as I mentioned earlier, just releasing them from your bitter judgment and changing the jurisdiction from you being the judge to allowing God to be the judge. I mean, he is anyway, but you are now taking your hands off of that decision of what to do with them, how to punish them. You yourself are releasing that and allowing the Lord to do as he sees fit. So this is just a tool. It's just a way to process everything. You may just have one of these. You may be all caught up on your forgivenesses. You may have a whole lineup of things. When I was in a class, one of the things that came up was forgiveness issues. And at the time I thought to myself, oh no, I don't have any forgiveness issues. I'm good. But then things would come up. I would be stirred up and churned is kind of more the word. They're like uh, that feeling you get right before you um, have to toss your cookies. <laughs> that's what it felt like spiritually. So I knew I wasn't done. So that's what this is for, is to just help me process these situations. I call it a forgiveness episode, and I just invite the Lord in and then go through all these steps. I don't do them just like rotely, like da 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 da, -da, -da and, you know, and just kind of be matter of fact about it. Just really, I tarry maybe is the word, where you linger and you just give the Lord time to go in and do what he wants to do. You open up your heart. And you just let God come in and speak to your heart, um, heal you, and you know, using all these different steps here. So if you have any questions, please feel free to ask. And then also, I would love to hear if you do anything of this nature, if you use this tool, how it went for you. And then also, if you have any other thoughts, like do I need to add a, a step 7B in there or you know, 15 or 16 or whatever, because I really want this to be thorough and it may very well be that you've got something to add to it. So thank you so much for watching. And the thing I would say about this is uh, forgiveness is a hard area. It's a lot more fun to try a craft or any of the fun things that I present in any of my videos. but this is one that it would be really easy to put off. So I wanna encourage you along the lines of what this video series is about to not put it off, but let's do this. So thank you for watching.